And so friends, uh, good day, a very warm welcome to you as we meet together today in this way to celebrate Ascension Day. Uh, we will be celebrating today virtually, but I encourage you simply to set aside some time to spend some time in reflection to remember the promise again of Jesus as we look to his ascension into heaven and the promise of Pentecost to come. Why don't you pray with me? As a risen and ascended Christ, you surround us with witnesses and you send us the Counselor who opens our minds to understand your teaching. Bless us today with such grace that our lives may become a blessing for the world now and in the age to come. Amen. And so friends, as I said earlier, we are celebrating Ascension Day today, often one of those days, religious days, that we forget about, especially since it's no longer a public holiday. But nevertheless, an important one, not just because Jesus was taken up into the sky, which often is a strange thing to process with our, our 21st century scientific knowledge, um, but more especially because of the promise of what the church will become and the promise of the church for the church. And so I invite you to turn with me to Scripture, reading from Acts chapter 1 today, Acts chapter 1, from verse 1 to verse 11. Remember that Acts is written by Luke. It is the second chapter of Luke's Gospel, the second book of Luke's Gospel almost. Uh, the first book, Luke uh, described the work of Jesus. The second book, he describes the work of the Holy Spirit. And so reading from verse 1 of chapter 11. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it's not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and all Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. And so just reading so far today, shall we spend a moment in prayer? So precious love, your ascended Son promised the gift of holy power. Send your spirit of revelation and wisdom that in the blessed freedom of hope we may witness to the grace of forgiveness and sing songs of joy with the peoples of the earth to the one who makes us one body. Amen. Friends, as we spend time reflecting on what ascension means for us and particularly for the church, uh, I don't want to spend a lot of time, simply want to draw your attention to one or two items, maybe three points, because I'm a good Methodist preacher, one or two points that come up in our reading today that I think are helpful and meaningful for us. I think as we, as we gather together on Ascension Day, what we are doing is preparing uh, expectantly for Pentecost. Uh, the promise that is given to the disciples by Jesus is that they will receive the Holy Spirit and, and they are to wait for that. So, so we enter into the next 10 days with a sense of hope and a sense of expectation, a sense of anticipation in what God is going to do. And I think that's so important when so often 
we find ourselves caught up in this world which is so broken, especially over the last few years. Uh, instead of getting caught up in the brokenness, to get caught up in the sense of hope and expectation. Friends, especially in our Methodist congregations over the next couple of months as we prepare for our circuit courtly meeting at the end of July, we're going to be asking those questions and asking, what should the church be doing? Uh, what is the church called to in times like these? How do we reimagine the church so that we can bring about a, a sustained message of hope and, and healing in a world which is often hopeless and broken. And so that's the, that's the attitude that we enter into Ascension Day, Unity Week, as we enter into Pentecost and the promise and the reception, the receiving of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost Sunday. So as we, we do that, I, I want to just to highlight a couple of things in that passage. First thing I want to highlight is that they were together with Jesus. As they enter the season, as they begin to prepare for the Holy Spirit, before Jesus ascends to heaven, they were with Jesus. They had gathered as his disciples with him. Um, that's important. I think we need to remember that we continue to gather with Jesus. Whatever we're going through, whatever is happening, we continue to gather with Jesus, with his followers. And for us, that would be the context of the church service. Not necessarily a virtual service, but to gather together in person. I think that as we go forward, that's something that we need to recover in our worshiping communities. And so first of all, they were with Jesus. Second of all, Jesus makes a promise to them. He says, you will receive power, which is always an encouraging thing, especially when we are feeling powerless or weak or impotent or unable to change our circumstances. Jesus says, you will receive power. Uh, and that's very encouraging. But we must never forget that we've come through a journey where we follow Jesus, looking at Jesus, who says, I give up my power. Jesus who gives up his power to save his life. And so when we start talking about the gift, the promise of power, we should remember that it's not power for us to do whatever we like, but rather it's power for us to give up, power for us to surrender. But particularly in this case, Jesus tells his disciples what the power is for. And the power is to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of of the earth. That's like Jesus saying, I'm giving you uh, the power to be my witnesses in Milneton, Brooklyn, uh, in Cape Town, uh, in the Cape Province, and even through the rest of South Africa. Uh, and so the promise to, to be witnesses is a promise that is meant to go out into the four corners of the world. It begins where you are, in Jerusalem, where the disciples are, in Milneton, in Brooklyn, where we are, and goes out from there into into Cape Town, into the Western Cape, into the rest of South Africa, Africa even. Uh, and certainly as a Methodist church, we believe that we offer the gift of healing for the nations. Um, so that's the second thing I want to say. What does it mean to be witnesses? That's the third thing. Uh, being witnesses doesn't mean, surely it doesn't mean, if we look at the example of Jesus' life, it doesn't mean going to lord it over others. And so when we go back to Luke's gospel to see what Luke has, has said in that, that part of the story before he transitions to Acts, Luke says this, um, he speaks about repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. So if we are to be empowered by the Holy Spirit to be witnesses to Jesus, uh, then we are to witness and speak about repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And that's tremendously good news. That's, that's what the church is called to do. I think sometimes we, we make a mistake and we want to come in power and lord it over others. Yet we are called to be witnesses of repentance, of seeing God, of being aware of God where, wherever we are. And the joyful good news of forgiveness of sin. And I guess that's the last thing that I want to say uh, today as we recognize the Ascension. Really what is happening during Ascension Day is that Jesus is handing the work that he has done over to the church and saying to them, what you have seen me do, you go and do for others. So that the work continues, the work that Jesus began continues. We shouldn't have to, to ask today, where is Jesus? We should be able to see Jesus in the church. And indeed, it is the promise of Jesus that the Holy Spirit 
will come upon us, even as the Spirit came upon Jesus at his baptism, to empower us and to enable us to continue the work that he has called us to. And so, friends, I pray that as you reflect on this uh, today and for the next 10 days through Unity Week, that that would certainly be true for you, even as it is for me. Amen.